Today we're going to take a moment to talk about the vector options that you have in Photoshop. Photoshop is a raster based program which deals with pixels primarily, but you can use vector based shapes, uh, paths, anchor points, pen tool, um, similar to Illustrator. And uh, there's some reasons that you would do that in Photoshop occasionally. Uh, most of the time you would do that in Illustrator. But let's talk about vector real quick. Vector has two main properties to it. It has anchor points, those are these little squares, and it has paths, and that's the line in between those squares. Those paths can be straight, like this, or they can be curved, like this. The curved paths can be adjusted with the handlebars. The distance that you pull that handlebar will increase or decrease the severity of that curve, and the angle that you move that handlebar will change the angle of that curve as it passes through it. You can also break a handlebar by using the Convert Anchor Point tool, which is found underneath the pen tool here, right there. And now those handlebars will work independently of each other. Once you do that, you can right click, you can create a vector mask, you can create a shape, you can make a selection. Um, there's a lot of options. So if you're to do that, um, on an image, let's, let's talk about how that would work. Um, over here in your Paths palette, if you don't see this, then you can go to Window and pull up Paths. Um, we're going to delete these two because I don't want these here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip just around her arms here because I want to put an object behind that. So I'm going to make a copy and also just press Apple J. Um, we'll call this the Arms Clip. And we'll call this one main. Okay, this white layer is just, just for, so we can see what's going on. So then I'm just going to bring in my pen tool. I'm going to zoom in, Apple Plus. And I'm just going to trace around what I want. Now the great thing about the uh, pen tool, as opposed to using a raster base or pixel based painted mask, is that I can come back and adjust these lines very easily. So if you're clipping a product like a guitar or something like that, um, this is a great way to do that because the lines that you use can be very crisp. They don't have the pixelization that you have with uh, raster based things because they're not pixels. I'm jump all the way over here. Now every time I see a curve I'm just clicking and dragging just enough to kind of wrap around that curve. I can always come back and adjust these. Notice this change of direction right here. I'm going to put one right in the middle of that change of direction. Here's another change of direction on your tricep there. Okay, and as we go into the shoulder muscle, there's a little dip and a bulge. We're just following those. I don't want to get any black, so I'm going to come over here and switch my white arrow tool. I'm just going to adjust that in. We can make further adjustments as needed, but when I come back to my pen tool, notice I have that diagonal slash. That's going to bring me back and start me back on this anchor point so that I'm not starting a new line. I'm just going to jump up here. Now if you're on the pen tool, you can switch uh, tools real quick with the modifier key. And if you're hovering over an anchor point and you hold Command or the Apple key, it'll bring up your white arrow. Or if you hold the Alt or the Option key, it'll bring up your Convert Anchor Point tool. So I could come in here and convert that anchor point, drag that around. Once I let go of that key, it jumps right back. Similar to how it works with the space bar and moving around your document. Okay, go back to my pen tool, start there. I'm going to close off this shape. When you're closing off a shape, you just see that little circle. That means it's a completed shape. And we come through and we make minor adjustments on some of these curves that got to be a little extreme and are kind of in the wrong spot. And once we turn this into a vector shape, you'll be able to, or vector mask, you'll be able to see a little bit better what's going on. So that's pretty decent. I like where that, I like where that is. So now you just right click and you have all these different options. We could fill this with a color, we could do whatever. I'm going to create a vector mask. Notice it creates a mask over here and it made a copy of that path. So this is this is the arms path, okay, and this is the arms clip, that layer, and it created a vector mask on that layer. Now if you want to hide or show, you can just Apple H to hide or show as long as you have a selection tool. 
So I'm gonna hide this and just kind of take a look around and see if we have any edges. Like it's a little dark right here. So Apple H is gonna bring that back. I'm just gonna select just that one anchor point. You'll notice that it is filled in. And the other ones are not filled in, which means I can just adjust this one anchor point. And you gotta make sure that you have that path selected. That mask selected. I was I was altering something else, so come in here like that. And notice that as I do that, it it clips for me. So I can make these little minor adjustments and see the exact result of that as I'm doing it. We're going to call that good right after I make this little guy there. Come in just a little too much on that guitar. Perfect. Okay. Apple H to hide that. That looks great. Okay, we bring this back. Now I'm going to stick something in between these two. See, if I were to take the opacity down, like that, you can kind of tell. I'll leave that there so we can kind of see what's going on. And I'm just going to draw another vector shape. This time, instead of doing a path with the pen tool, I'm going to create a shape up here. Now, you want to make sure that you have shape selected. You could also do this with the path, but we're going to go with shape. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle just like that. That's great. Okay, now if I, if I double click, I can change the color. And uh, we'll just do like a, like a blue for right now. Now I can alter these anchor points just like anything else. So if I brought my white arrow tool, you want to make sure that you click once to select it and then click again. And then you can click and drag. And we can kind of do this. Notice I don't want it to go that far. I'm going to come down a little bit like that. Okay, so we can kind of go like that. I'm going to bring up the opacity of this. And it looks like it cuts behind her. Now we're cutting into her shoulder just a touch. So you can kind of zoom in and you can make those adjustments so that it doesn't look like it's doing that. And zoom out and see how that looks. See, it looks pretty decent. Nice sharp line. Okay, I can come in here and I can adjust this point as well. I don't get that angle. There we go. Now nothing's really cutting in. Nice sharp line. And you just kind of continue to kind of check things out, get them to where you want them to be, and you're good to go. Now, on this shape, this rectangle over here, if we wanted to change that, we can still come in and we can still convert these points. If I wanted to add an anchor point in the middle here, do a little swoop, we'll grab my white arrow tool, I can change that curve. Okay, if I want this to match it, I can come with my convert anchor point tool like this, hit my pen tool. Hold down Alt or Option, and I can kind of curve that line, curve this line, so I can kind of have that swoosh if you want to do that as well. Apple H to hide that, see how it looks, and then you can kind of continue to make adjustments. So that's a quick tutorial on how to use the pen tool. Um, on these masks, I just want to show you one more thing. If for some reason, let's just hide this. If for some reason you wanted to invert this mask, you want to make sure that you have the white arrow selected, your selection tool selected, and that will change this top bar up here like this. And then you have different options, and you can kind of play with these options and see what they do. If you do subtract, notice it cut a hole out and it left the rest, it inverted that selection. You can go combine shapes. You can come in and you can add an additional shape to that. For example, I could come in here like this, click and drag. Except make sure that you have your path selected. You can go like that, and it'll subtract, or it'll combine, and you can add to that and continue to do that. So you can have multiple shapes. You know, if you want to combine both of those things, then you can select both of them, and there's kind of like a little combined thing. Merge shape components, and they become one object. But even as multiple objects, you kind of move them around and do whatever with them. So if they're separate objects, and I wanted this one to be up here, you know, I can grab that with my black arrow tool just to select the entire object. I can move that around and it'll it'll stay within that mask but it'll stay a separate shape. So that's a quick uh, quick look at some vector options that you have to do masks and shapes in Photoshop and that should help you do some design and layout um, on some of your photo design projects.